Hello everyone. So during the last session, in the last session, uh, last lecture we looked into the uh, how to code, how to uh, the important points regarding Martin coding in the lab during the lab. Now in this section, uh, we will now uh, look at how now you have assuming you have the RTL files prepared. Uh, I'll now go into how to read this design into design compiler. What to look out for? So, if you look at the uh, the steps here. So, what we discussed in the last section was about this developing HTML file. We've already seen uh, how to set the library. What is inside the library? We saw. Uh, we learned about different variables, like target library, target library, and all that. Now we will be looking into this. We design. We will be looking at the three commands: analyze, library, and these files. And uh, uh, during the whole this whole unit of synthesis, I'll keep following this flowchart. Now let's let's look at. Uh, now assuming you have RTL files ready with you, what you could do with them. So the first important command is analyze. Uh, it translates HDL into intermediate format. Let's not worry about what that intermediate format is. Uh, it's something internal to design compiler. Uh, <coughs> this command is recommended for reading RTL. This is very very important when you want to read RTL or when you want to uh, read Verilog. This is the command you should use first up. So any command, uh, any command, uh, you can get help in design compiler by using this. So analyze minus help will tell you what op options are available. If you do a man analyze, M A N space analyze, it will give much more detail about each and every option. So I would recommend, uh, like when when wherever it's the first time you're using any command, I would recommend using these two options. So analyze my help will give you a quick summary of what an option are there, and man analyze will tell you in detail what, what it is. It is a lot more detailed than the minus help option. So its options are minus library library name, minus work library name. So these two are just to uh, specify what library you would use uh, to store the intermediate output of the after reading the RTL. This is. In conjunction with define design list, is what we saw earlier. These are anyway you could uh, so uh, a parenthesis here. A parenthesis here means that this is an optional argument. So minus library library name minus work library name they are both optional arguments. Uh, since this command is common for uh, Verilog and VSD, that's why you have two arguments. Minus library minus work. So but uh, once you Start coding in Verilog. Most probably, you will not need these two options if you design the kind of design it correctly. You will only need this one minus format format string. This will tell uh, design compiler what format it is. So, for reading a Verilog, you would say analyze minus format Verilog. <laughs> Again, uh, you can read about these options minus update minus schedule create update and all that. Uh, because these are not used frequently, these are used for some advanced cases, some very special cases. You could read about them. Then this is a very special case. Minus again, minus define macro name. So uh, you go to go back to Verilog. You can have parameter. You can have uh, macros defined. Obviously, this is uh, only for Verilog. Application only for Verilog. And uh, so Verilog has if def macros. So many times. Uh, Code uh, an RTL code will have if this statement. So you could define those macros. So let's say I uh, I want to uh, uh, I want to set uh, the constant. I say that um, let's say I have an option in my design to set a particular register to either zero or one based on two use cases. So I can say I can define a macro. I can say if def let's say if def zero, then I'll assign register to zero. Otherwise, I have assigned the register to one. So you, by defining this, if you do not define anything, it will go to the else part. So it will define it. It will specify the register. It will assign constant one to the register. 
using this minus defined macro you could say minus defined zero and correspondingly design compiler will pass that and uh, it will uh, assign the register value to be zero. This is very uh, similar to the preprocessor directive uh, of C. So once uh, so analyze what analyze actually does is it enables you to define macros while reading a Verilog or VSDN file. Obviously, for VSDN, the macro is not the macros are not supported there. So uh, it uh, analyzes simply and it also tell what all syntax error to your RTL files contain. So once you pass analyze, it means that at least your code is uh, syntactically correct. Then what follows is second command is elaborate. It is the second step of SDS translation. Elaborate will actually build the GTEC data. Uh, so after you have read in the file using analyze, elaborate will map. It will start the mapping or, or rather translation of your code into GTEC. It will start mapping it into GTEC. What it does is that SDL parameters are expanded. So you have a parameter uh, command in, in the log. The, the all parameters will be expanded. It will infer register and latches. Uh, we, we saw in last lecture how does design compiler infer register and infer latches. It will actually infer that and it will link the design. What linking design means that if you have a PLL or a memory and that memory is part of your, should, should be a part of your link library, it will now map, it will now link the design. Elaboration means the design should be completely linked. Each and every component should be mapped. If it is not able to link the design, it will be So it supports parameter passing in architecture selection. Uh, architecture selection is VSD specific, parameter passing is very not specific. It is, uh, so analyze elaborate, both these commands combined together are recommended for reading RTL into design compiler. Again, you could do elaborate minus L. Again, it has lot so many options, which is VSD specific, which is log specific. Uh, again, there are, uh, you could read about the options here, most important thing is design name. We will see a bit more about date block later in the flow. You, uh, the design name is the top level of the design. Now, in the last lecture, we saw uh, in the design of an accumulator. The accumulator contains an adder, a mux, and a register block. So, the top level module, which is the accumulator module, will be given here now because that's the top level module. So, you only give, so you analyze all the RTL files, but elaborate only from the top. So, you should be very, very clear about this concept that. Elaboration defines, elaboration should be done on the level at which you want to perform the synthesis. So elaboration, the design name here will be the module name of the top level design. Once you start working yourself in design compiler or once you see few examples, uh, we will have example videos later on, you can, uh, you will be, it will be very clear, it will be very clear. Now, there is one more command called read file. Now, read file is used on RTL. <coughs> read file performs analysis and elaboration in the in one step. So this is exclusive. This command is exclusive. This should not be used along with either you use analyze elaborate or you use read file for a particular design. So you only use one, either analyze elaborate or read file. But read file does not perform any parameter passing or architecture. It has limited functionality when compared to analyze elaborate. It is recommended for reading map netlist. Why do you want to read map netlist? Now let's say you are doing a big design and a part of the design is in the netlist form. It, it, it is a very common occurrence that in a, a block which let's say you are procuring from outside from some other team or from some other company. They might give you, give that block to you in, in a netlist format. They do not want to, you to see their code. The code is proprietary, confidential. So they will give you the netlist, uh, they will give you the gate netlist. 
So how do you read the gate at least? You use using read by. So you read by you specify if it's Verilog or DDV or DBA and so on. Again, you could read about all these options uh, in the time compiler in detail. However, you can use this to read the RTN also. If the RTN is simple enough, it does not have a it, it, it supports macroname reading. If your RTL does not have parameterized design, uh, you can go and read about parameterized design in general. If your design does not have parameterized design, then you could actually use this read file for reading RTL also. Or let's say all your code is you are just compiling one module, you are just synthesizing and testing only one module. So you could use read file. There is no need to do a separate analyze in RTL. Now let's look at one of the most popular uh, GTEC sequential cell. It is called SEQGEN of SetGen. So whenever SGN compiler reads the design, it uses this SetGen module to represent an inferred flip flop or a lap. So whenever it encounters an obvious block and sees and deduces that it's either a lap or a flip flop, it will map that logic. Onto a GTEC sequential element. Please note that this is a GTEC element. It is not a technology. It is not a standard cell library cell. It's a generic cell. As you can see, that this generic cell contains clock, data in, clear and enable are asynchronous things. Enable is asynchronous set. This is asynchronous reset. Next stage reset. These are synchronous pins, synchronous toggles, synchronous pin sets. So, as you can see by the pin names itself, this block can actually represent either a flip flop or a latch or a toggle flip flop, a number of sequential elements just by some tweaking of the some, uh, you could set some constraints and you can represent any sequential block using a set gen. Let us take a flip-flop example, so this is the code of a deep flip-flop with asynchronous reset. How do I know it is an asynchronous reset? Because reset is in the sensitive group as we discussed in the last lecture. Now uh, design compiler as soon as it reads this code, as soon as it elaborates, please note elaborate is the command that will force a GTEC mapping. So as soon as it elaborates, it will map, now Q is no, now it analyzes and see that Q is the output of the block, the flip flop is asynchronously set. So now it will connect Q, it will instantiate a set thing, it will connect connect the Q here, it will connect the clock, clear is asynchronously set, data goes to next state, so next state is apparently data okay, and rest all synchronous, asynchronous uh, clear and set, asynchronous set, they are all set to 0. Synchronous enable is set to 1 to enable the function of this, of this sentence. So usually in most of the cases you do not need to be concerned about the functionality of sentence because it ultimately an intermediate step. What you are concerned about first thing is I will go into this, you should look at the elaboration before. And second, <laughs> please note till this step synthesis has not been done, we are still reading the design. So once the design is read. Uh, once it infers flip flops and latches, the design compiler will simply map flip flops and latches to affect them. There are a lot many number of GTEC cells also. So there are GTEC or GTEC and GTEC and so it will map all that. Uh, so the first step in synthesis, uh, if we go back and try to remember, is translation, translation and mapping. So translation means reading of the RTL, mapping means mapping the RTL into GTEC. So this is one example where it will map the sequential logic into segment. Now let's look at very very important uh, thing, very very important sort of report which is called inference report. Let's first look at the inference report for register. Now SGL compiler provides inference report that will de describe each inferred flip flop or latch. So each of the always law, sequential law, will get mapped. Uh, so design compiler after at the time of elaboration, when you say elaborate the top level design, it will start throwing out reports. <coughs> me. 
the, the enabling or disabling of generation of insulin support can be uh, can be switched on and off by using the SDN in reporting level variable. So, uh, the SDN in prefix here represents that this SDN in variable or SDN in variables are used by the SDN compiler part of the design compiler. So, SDN compiler is actually the engine that reads in the level of. So, SDN in reporting level variable controls uh, the enabling or disabling of these elaboration reports. By default, if these are enabled, then these reports are very, very useful during the analysis of the design. So, what do you do? You read in the RPA and wherever you expected a latch or a flip flop, you look at this report. So, it will say, for example, for this, uh, as soon as it reads this module, this module, it knows Q is a sequential element. So, it will add a suffix here Q underscore, so it will add underscore REG to the name to show that it's a register. So, it will say register name is QRED, it will tell that the type is flip-flop. If it detected a latch, if it inferred a latch, the uh, label here would be latch. It tells what is the bit, it's one in this case. It tells whether it's bus, so width is one, it's not a bus. MB tells it's multi-bit, let's leave it for now, you don't need to be concerned about this for now. These are very important, AR, AS, SR, etc. These tell you that whether it has inferred an asynchronous reset, asynchronous set, synchronous reset or synchronous set. Now, this inference report is not consistent with the code here. So, now this code here tells it's, a, it's an asynchronous reset. So, uh, there should be a yes. Yeah. So, asynchronous reset is a yes. Why? Multi-bit is no. AR is yes. That means synopsis uh, design compiler has correctly identified that you intended to have an asynchronous reset here. So, for every register during the start of your coding process, when you start synthesis, first synthesis, you should carefully look at all the, the complete inference report for each and every register. What about the combination logic? If let's say, for example, your combination logic is not correct and we saw a few mistakes uh, in, the, in the previous lecture where few small mistakes could mean inference of a latch. So, if you see a latch here, and you did not mean it. Then you can see. Uh, then you can you can search for latch in this report. You can grab for the latch in this report, elaboration report, and correct all such cases which are unintended. Usually, uh, the most common mistake is not specifying every case in the case as expectation. So it results in a latch. Uh, you could grab for latch in this report, elaboration report, and correct on it. Now let's see. Uh, how does an effective coding get rid of the unwanted register? So, sequential elements are not easily optimized on. It is not like combination logic. Sequential elements represent timing sequence and design compiler in most of the cases when it sees a sequential element from your always block in your optimal code, it will map them to flip flops and those flip flops it does not know if, if they should be optimized off or not, right. They, they represent a timing sequence and they represent the way you post the RTL. So, you have to make sure that your RTL should contain sequential element only when it is desired. It is the duty of the designer to make sure that. If you have unwanted sequential elements, obviously your area will be more. So, let us look at this case, this count, so you have always a deposit slot. You have a reset. So you have a. So now this is uh, question: Is this a synchronous reset or an asynchronous reset? Answer: It's a synchronous reset. Why? Reset is not part of the sensitivity code. It's a synchronous reset. Count goes to zero. If it's reset state, if it's not, if it doesn't get reset, count implements. There are three outputs here: and bits, or bits, or bits, and or and or. All get these values and gets and of all bits, or gets or of all bits, or gets or of the power. Now, when it reads, when it reads the uh, the code, in this particular always block that starts here and ends here, it sees 
following the steps it sees down it sees and it sees or it sees dot now you see corresponding you see the inference report like this or bits so it will it will append underscore h or bits range count range or bits and bit range all it is deducted there after stop it deposits block it specifies the width here one of them that is count range is a bus uh, it did not uh, although you expected that reset would be a synchronous reset it did not it does not have a y for the synchronous reset it does not have a y here so it is not deducing that it is not inferring that this has a secret synchronous reset uh, we be i tell you how to correct this how to make sure that you tell design compiler that it's a synchronous reset because it will affect the way implementation is done it will affect the way the netlist is implemented let's let's leave it let's hold that thought for now as we will see the written lecture itself how to encounter that but important thing is that do you actually want and which or which is orbit to be the discussed so this is stop so you should carefully look at this code and decide in most in but just looking taking a first look and just delving it a little bit deeper into this we can say that and which or which and orbit are combinational operations on on the count and most probably it is not needed that they be represented by flip flop how do we correct this code like this again we go back to the basics first thing we have to separate combination and sequence so here is how we do that we separated the sequence part and the combination part is another always drop now when it when it sees this always drop design compiler will assume of the state will know that these are combination outputs it will impact only count rate as we expect not and which sorted and drop so this is the way we have to be very very clear while coding what is sequential what is combinational and code according to that first very important and basic rule separate the always blocks for combination and sequence this is very very important thing. this will make sure that you are not having number of flip flops are not more than what they should be this is a particular case of unloaded register so sql compiler will not automatically keep unloaded registers or unloaded flip flops or latch in the design these at the start itself sql compiler knows these are not necessary and they are removed even before the design is completely optimized So they are removed in the first pass of optimization. What are unloaded registers? What are inference stuff? Let's give an example. So a module few, two you have three inputs of two bits each, I N one, I N two, I N three. You have input clock, output out. You have two registers, some one and some two. You have wire save. Always at polish clock, sequential element. There is no reset here. Some one gets I N one to I N two, some two gets I N one to I N two to I N three. But now The output here, the out. There's only one output. Out gets the someone's complement. Save gets someone plus something. But is save an output? Is save feeding to any output? No. There's only one output out, and out gets someone. What about some two? Some two is in no way affecting any output. Although you have a wire. But this wire doesn't go anywhere. You assign save to something, but this save is not going to the module module boundary. So now, as the compiler knows, DC knows that save is not used, and sum two that is used to generate save is also not used. Although sum two is there is there is flip flop. It's a valid flip flop, but the output of this flip flop goes to a wire. And that wire is hanging. That wire is not connecting to anything. So, the combination logic of save is not save, and the register, the flip flop sum two, is not save. Both of these are optimal job. So, what you get is registers 
corresponding to someone that is again you have to be very careful while coding that if you are not using something don't even put it there it will be based confusion or otherwise if you intended to use some to then you should make sure that these registers go to some output or drive something otherwise they will be optimized out. however however in the initial design phase let's say i coded this i intended to use some to but for a later a later period so and you want to still want to see what is the area impact you want to analyze what is the area impact but you do not know where some to will go for now so you can tell dc to keep the unloaded registers so here is one more exam here is one more variable called sdl in preserved sequential <coughs> that tells dc which says to preserve so to preserve unloaded and driven cryptocurrency in latex in a beta network we said sdl in preserved sequential to all to preserve only flip flops so this if you said this to all dc will preserve everything all the registers all and latex if you said this to ff it will preserve only flip flops if you said this to latex it will preserve only latex to preserve all unloaded sequential cells including unloaded sequential cells that are used only as loop variables Please ignore this for now. We don't need to go deep into this now. The loop variables, loop variables are part of forest. Uh, uh, then, uh, so of for loops, the loop variables, and uh, so uh, a loop variable in a, in a software concept, a loop variable is nothing but so the loop variable counts. But in case of synthesis, in case of hardware. a loop variable simply means that the hardware will be either repeated depending on the uh, depending on the kind of logic you write or there will be some counter so not necessary it is not necessary that the loop variable will itself be a flop so if the if the for example if the hardware is repeated let's say you have a loop of five and it means that corresponding hardware should be repeated five times there will not be any flip flop that will represent the count of five so if you set this variable to all plus loop it will start saving the loop variables also please uh, you should be very careful in using this variable because by default this variable is uh, not set it set to uh, it set to the default value means that uh, it will not keep a loaded register if you choose to enable it to all or ff to like you should be prepared Uh, to see an area increase, you so should be very careful while using this variable. Now, uh, so we saw uh, register inference. We saw few inference reports. Uh, inference report is of this type: register name, type, and so on. But, but there are some limitations on register inference. That means. I already stressed the fact that Verilog, complete Verilog, is not synthesizable. Only a subset is. So you should be careful while writing uh, RTL for synthesis. And these are the limitations that tell us that in what all cases a RTL compiler will have problems in inferring a flip flop or a latch. <coughs> so whenever we model a synthesis behavior using a flop, the tool does not support more than one independent flop. Then asynchronous behavior is modeled. If the always block is purely synchronous, multiple independent is block is supported. Uh, we'll see few examples of this later. It cannot infer flip flops and latches with three state outputs. It assumes a flip flop and a latch. It assumes will always have two states, either zero or one, not red. If you have a special library cell that has this case. You should instantiate it. It will never, never infer. Even if you have a flip flop with red output in your standard cell library, it will never use it. You should, if you assign the value to be red in your always block, it will error. It will error out. It is. It cannot infer flip flops with bidirectional pins. The flip flop pins should be the input or output, not the output. 
again whatever special case whatever cases uh, are written here if it is not supported and you have a cell that implements that you should instantiate it specifically you cannot infer flip flop with multiple clock input again you should have flip flop with only one clock uh, that means you are always at the rate for which specifically should have only one clock you cannot infer multi port latches uh, again uh, it does not infer register bands, register size, and nothing but small memory. So it will not infer. Let's say you have a small memory as part. Uh, you unknowingly you specified a register file uh, as part of a target target library. Design compiler will never infer that. Inferring means it will never automatically pick up some hardware to replace your RTA. Inferring means that. How do you encounter this? You do not code an RTL part barely, you instantiate that part. So, for example, you have a register file, you want to use it, you instantiate the register, the register file. You do not rely on design compiler to input that thing. So, uh, uh, although we can instantiate this stuff with bidirectional thing, design compiler will ignore that. If you treat them as black hole, that means it does not know the functionality. So, if you use an if statement to infer deep bit stuff, this is very very important. The if statement must occur at the top level of the always block, like this. If you have some statement here and you want DC to infer this is a asynchronous reset flip flop, it will not do it because the first statement is not an if statement. So, very important coding guidelines whenever you want to write. The code for an asynchronous set or reset flip flop. First line should be always if reset or if set. Else part you write your the rest of the code. But first line should always tell DC what is the reset functionality. You should be very, very clear about it. So this tells you that you cannot arbitrarily code RTM. You have a sort of a set of guidelines which you should follow. To make sure that design compiler does a correct input, does a correct input. We talk about finite state machines. Again, there are six set of rules about finite state machines. Uh, the set of rules it must never be assigned a value other than defined state values. But almost finite state machine cannot have latches. It must always have flip flops. Uh, the FSM register, uh, the register, all these are register rules. Must, must never be a module port function for the task port. The state register that is, we are specifically talking about this register that maintains the state. The, it cannot be a port of any module or function or task. It can only use the operands like equal to or not equal to, that is the comparisons, and not any other expression. Since the state will always be compared, only compared, there won't be any data operation done on it. There can be only one FM design per FSM design per module. If you have want to have multiple FSM, you need to have separate modules. All ports of initial design. So, so again, bidirectional supports and outputs are not supported here. Combination feedback loops are not supported. Although combination logic that does not depend on state vector is accurately represented. FSM will only should have only one block. And optional synchronous or asynchronous feedback in there. This is again a variable which tells a DC whether or not to automatically infer FSM. Let us look at one example. So, you have four states set 0, hold 0, set 1, hold 1. So, states are represented by parameters. It is a very uh, good way of coding in FSM. You, uh, so, this is a one hot, one hot coding. That means that only one bit will be one at the time. And so, four states are represented like this. Set 0 will have Let's be one. Port zero will have bit one one. Set one will have bit two one. Port one will have the MSB one. So four states for one hot encoding, you need four bits. So you by using parameters, you define all these states. Current state is my uh, current state is nothing but the state register. So uh, the first always block is the sequential block. This is the sequential block. Which tells DC that this part here is this state register. A very simple way this is a single, this is an asynchronous reset. Current state gets next state if it is not reset. 
and then in, in a separate combinational block which forms the combinational part of the SSM, you write the operations that will take place based on the state, based on the current state. So current state you write and you use a case statement. So current state if it is uh, something is uh, if it is set 0 based on this you follow this diagram and you start coding. If you have an input dependency you have you write it here like this if and else and so on and make sure that all the cases are covered, all the states are covered. Now in this case if you if you set the variable this variable FSM model is running to true the dynamic compiler will give this kind of statistic, this kind of statistic. This this statistic does not is not matching with the code here I know but you could have it will define it will tell you what the states are, it will give you the parametric code here, it will tell you how many number of states are there so you can match this inference support with your code and make sure that the design compiler understands what you wanted it to understand. And please also see that this FSM follows each and every rule it is in. Just try to map it one to one. You can use this code as a as help to code whatever FSM you want. So first you should have a state diagram and then you can code like this. Now let us look at a very important concept of SDL compiler synthesis directive. So SDL what, what is a synthesis directive? It is these are special comments that will affect the action of SDL compiler and design compiler. These comments are ignored by any other tool. So they look like comments but they are special comments. They begin with slash slash synopsis or slash slash synopsis. There is one more notation but, but we will use this slash slash synopsis notation in all our examples. So they carry special value for, for design compiler. It will change, it will modify the way DC reads those statements, it will help you in some cases, these are dangerous in other cases. It will, as a compiler will report a syntax error, it will use that as an option on a regular command. We will see. Now let us look at the few most famous uh, synthesis directives, when to use them, when to avoid them, and so on. Async, set, reset. Now, uh, we saw that there is a rule that if we want to code async verse, feedback or feedback, feedback, whatever. The first statement should be if. It is very important. Now, in most of the cases, the tool will, so as I mentioned before, asynchronous set or reset cannot be, will only be implemented only if you have a corresponding standard set in the library, corresponding block or latch with asynchronous reset or reset in the only then you could map it. So in most of the cases if you have an asynchronous set and reset and you have correct coding done then you do not need to use this variable. But in some cases if you see that even if you write the correct code I am not sure what that case might be but if you see that this is an again old variable my people I have not seen people using it a lot. So you should try first not to use it. See the inference report whether DC has correctly inferred your asynchronous set or reset. If it does not work, then you can try it out. You can write the comment like this slash slash synopsis asynchronous set reset, and you tell, tell DC that this reset is the one I am talking about. This reset, this reset is used here always under reset, it is used in the if statement. And you tell DC that this is the asynchronous signal. Use this only on single bit signal. Mm -hmm. uh, as the compiler will see it, and then it will check whether on the on reset have you assigned any constant to the register. If you have done it, it will try to look in standard cell library. If you ha indeed have an asynchronous reset on the set block, and then it will not. Then we have a synchronous, we have a synchronous sync set reason. Now this is important. <coughs> this is used to infer a D flip block with a synchronous set reset. When we compile a design, 
The second inferred by SGL compiler will be max of flip flop in the logic library with singular settings of spin. Or, or if your library does not contain a flip flop with a singular settings set, then design compiler will use the regular deep flop and build the synchronous set reset logic in front of a deep flop. The choice depends on what method will provide a better optimization result. It is important to use this directive to label because it tells DC that signal should be kept as close to the register as possible during the Now, first, first assume that you have a flop in your standard library that has a signal to reset and reset and you want to use it. Then you simply tell DC that okay by using sync set reset that yes I have I want to use this flop and this is my particular reset pin. Reset signal, DC will directly use it. This is the best case scenario. If you do not have a, a flop, a corresponding flop in your design, now DC cannot map it. So it will build a combination logic. Now this directive tells DC that my reset pin is very important. It should be kept as close to the register as possible. Otherwise, what may happen that this reset pin will be a lower priority signal, it will go, there might be a number of stages between this reset signal and your flop, and correspondingly, you might face problems in data simulation. This is not an easy example to tell right now. At the level, we are starting to learn synthesis, but as you go on, you will find that this is a problem in bit design, where you have complex signal sequence. So, uh, if your reset, signal reset is being generated by some complex logic, then and you want to keep that reset close to the flip flop, then you use this. Let's see one example. Here yeah, again, inference report is the way to go here. You go, you read in the design, you elaborate, and you look at the inference report. If it tells that asynchronous set is yes, your job is done. So, first, my recommendation: do not use this. Follow proper guidelines. That is, first line should be if uh, set or reset. If you see that your uh, corresponding option is set to Y, your job is done. If you still see N here, you can use this. Use the statement synopsis sync set reset here. The signal is set. If set, use set to one. And and verify with respect to the inference report. If the inference report is correct, you can go ahead. One more infer max. Many times uh, we have a lot of case statements and we want the tool to implement this using a max, not the combination logic, not, not add or sell, whatever kind of combination logic. This might increase the area uh, or or decrease or, or decrease the performance. But many times you would want that for there are many reasons why would you, you, you want that. Let's say your functionality is not final and you know that you might need to change something in the network later, then a mux kind of structure, a mux tree kind of structure is easier to understand in the network as opposed to an IDOS structure. A mux kind of structure, mux tree kind of structure has many times it has better timing but more area. So uh, if you want a design compiler, if you want to make sure that it uses uh, multiplexing logic uh, in your in your it, it picks up the mux logic in your RTL to multiplexers in your logic library. You need to use the first step is uh, you can use the synopsis inter mux here. Then you can see your GTEC GTEC whether so uh, corresponding to set gen uh, sequential block you have a mux of block here. It looks like this. You are selecting them. You have data handler. You are output. So if you uh, you must use simple variables at uh, control expression. For example, if we use not input a but the negation of input a, it will not infer a mux of. So whenever it infers a mux of, you use infer mux. When it infers a mux of, you can be rest assured that it will use the mux kind of structure form and it's a library to implement a mux tree in most of the cases, unless and until the timing or area is done. So, <coughs> as a first, as, as you start coding, 
I will not recommend you to use this always. Uh, from the last three, from uh, we saw three directives, we saw async set reset. I will not recommend that you use this. You, if you do proper coding and your library has a corresponding set, you are you are good. You can use sync set reset for complex synchronous set reset. So these are very special cases again. Again, the first thing you code, you code without using these directives. Look at the inference reports. See that whatever you expected is there. If not, then you can actually study about these directives and start using them. So I am just that's why I am mentioning only the famous ones. Again, with Inferma, I would not recommend it to use unless it is very much necessary. Now comes uh, the full case. So the two things here, full case and parallel case, are the most popular and most misused compiler directives. You should be very, very careful. First thing, you should not use them. But why are we studying this? We are studying this because in case you get an article code and somebody has used it, we should know what it means. We should know what kind of dangers it it gives us and we should know how to solve those problems. So full case prevent SDF compiler from generating logic to test any any value that is not covered by the case branches and create an implicit default branch. So let's say you have a set of case uh, a case block and all these cases are not mentioned here and there is no default. What does that mean? It means that DC will assume that in the cases that you have not specified, we want to preserve the value of the output and correspondingly it will infer a latch. You obviously do not know this. So what is the way out? The first way out is to correct your code. Use a default statement. Make sure your, that all your case analysis, all your case is complete. Complete, uh, you mention all the cases. But many times it is not possible. Many times the designers uh, will assume that or will know that the input case we want to code will never come, so it doesn't code it. So then to prevent a latch, you can use this. You can say synopsis full case in front of the case statement, case, case statement, and DC will now not infer a latch. We will see two examples. Parallel case will tell DC. Uh, if you do not use a parallel case and you have such a condition that more than one case can be true, uh, then it will make a priority kind of encoding. It will make a priority logic. DC will make priority logic to make sure that this prevents SGL compiler from building additional logic to ensure that first appearance of a few branch. So there are more than one branches that are evaluating to true. And it will make sure that the first attempt of the two branch is executed if more than one branch, one branch or two at a time. This will create extra logic. This will create extra priority logic. So you want to prevent that. So that is why you tell DC that, okay, boss, all these cases are exclusive. That means at one point only one of them is true. So please do not. Add any extra logic, any extra priority logic. So DC will not do that. Now let's see the inference report. DC will tell you at corresponding to each case branch, each case in your design, each case statement in your design, DC will produce an inference report similar to the system, similar to the blocks. For example, 367 line number, it will tell by line number and file number. It tells me here that line 367 of some file has a case statement and it is automatically filled and automatically parallel. That means that we have not specified any that compiler directive, we have not specified full case parallel case, but by design itself this case block has all the cases covered and only one case is true at one point. This is by design. So it tells auto and auto. It is automatic. This is the best case scenario. What if you forgot to code a case? 
Now, here it is telling me that at line 108, the case box is not full. That means all the cases are not covered, but it is current. For the other case, it will tell that okay, boss, it is full. So if it is not even full and not even valid, it will say no and no. So first two cases here tell us that compiler directives are not used. Now I started using compiler directives. So this tells me that at line 59, the case block it is full. Yes, it is full. But you have used a parallel case directive. User means that you are telling DC as a user that please this has family case. If you write full case, it will say user slash user. Now this table tells us that what happens when the case analysis description is full and parallel, no addition logic is needed. So you should achieve for this. For your case blocks, if you do not want priority logic, if you do not want latch, you should achieve for the first thing. By design, your code should be full and parallel code. If it is full but not parallel, then priority encoded logic will be there. It will generate logic to ensure that branch listed first takes effect. If it is parallel but not full, latches are created. If it is neither parallel nor full, then it will generate priority encoded logic and it will also create latches. Please understand this table very, very carefully. Spend some time over it. Try to see, try to code cases and see uh, where you might miss and it doesn't become a full or doesn't become a parallel. So on. Let's see some examples. Here, so this is the case statement. This select is of 2 bit. So maximum it can have four. So all four cases are coded. So this is by default full and obviously by default parallel. Why? Because only one of them this, this can be true at one time. Cell can either be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 at one time. All the cases are specified and only one can happen at one time. So it is parallel and full both. You do not need any compiler directive. Second case. Select is two bit. You can have four cases here, but only two are coded. So it is unknown what happens when cell equals 0, 1 and 1, 0. In this case, ACL compiler will generate logic to test for any value that is not covered and create an implicit default branch. Keyword is implicit. It will assume it will assume a default branch and try to it will try to make sure that Y here remains unchanged. That is why it will use latches. What you can do to correct this case? Use a default branch. Use a default branch or now you know that now in one of in some cases the designer knows that okay cell cannot take value of 0 1 and 1 0 ever then now select an input here what if designer knows that select will never take 0 1 1 0 and he's a bit lazy he doesn't write default here but write writes a full case here he cannot do that now by telling telling in office dc that okay i have written full case here it will assume it's full and it will not infer latches. This is the case here. So here we see that synopsis full case is used here for the first case. Case is i in, in is 2 bit. Again, only 3 are written because the maximum 4 cases. Report is not there in the first case statement. Condition i n is equal to 3 is not covered. However, designer knows that i n 3 will never occur and therefore sets the full case here. So, no latches. Both parallel case and full case are used here, which is again kind of a one hot encoding. Designer knows that so current state is a 4 bit signal. It has 16 states, only 4 states are coded here. So only 4 states are coded here, and these are this is one hot coding. 
So Denali knows here that only one bit will be one at a time and all other cases are invalid, they will not even come, this is a, a, a statement like that, that. So he instead of writing all the 16 cases here, he writes what are the valid cases and tells the see that it is full and parallel code. That means uh, DC will not have any priority encoding, it will not have any latches. So this is, you will see uh, in my experience, I have seen lot of articles like this. Because in this case, the designer has, he knows very well that these cases are invalid, they will never occur. And so his simulation test cases also have, don't have these cases, so he never faces the problem of simulation synthesis mission. But again, see, the important thing is that designer should know what we do. If you're not confident, if there is even a one percent chance that uh, these cases can occur, then please make sure that by design your case block should be put in panel, and there should not be any need to use the full case and panel. So, a word of caution, a final word of caution, although the, the full case directive and the, although both full case and default clauses prevent latch inference, they have different meanings. The full case directive asserts that all input values have been specified in those default clauses as well. This is for the case where you do not have default and you are using full case. You are, you are telling DC that assume, assume that all are covered, but the default clause explicitly specifies the output for any undefined input form. Now what is the difference here? in terms of the hardware generated? In terms of hardware generated in the first case, in the first case let's say, let's say we take a case here. Now here let's say I write default out is equal to B. So, now in this case, let's say there is some hardware than this. Compare it with this, the case where default is not specified. Now if default is not specified, if not a full case is given, DC will assume the value of output, such a value of output, will assume some value, either 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 whatever, such that the area is minimal. So it is like a part of map optimally. But let's see you specify default here. Until and fix the value of output, it might increase the area bit. Why? Because now the value is not don't care, it is some other value. So the optimization in case of don't care is better when compared to a non don't care case, fixed case, as you all know from the different design. So this is the difference. Now what can we do? We do not want to use the full case, yet we want the hardware to be optimal. In such cases, use a default clause with an output value of x. So we specify, in this case we say default out is equal to x. This tells that, this tells DC that okay boss, this is full by design, it will take auto in the inference support and now we are free to use the don't care bit during optimization. If we use full case directive, the gate level simulation might not match the RTM. Why? Because let's say there is a case which occurs which is which you did not specify in your case block and if the case actually occurs, then it will not match the RTM simulation whenever the case expression evaluates from unspecified input value. So this is a problem. If you use a default case, Simulation mismatch can only occur if you specify don't care condition and the case is special in, so in, the, in the first case when you use full case and your simulation mismatch occurs it is difficult to debug. But in the second case since you said the output value will be x it is easier to debug. So it is always preferable to use a default class and not use full case. I will summarize uh, this lecture. This is, this is the last slide. So we saw we saw how to read the RTL, what commands to use. So for reading RTL, I would recommend you analyze library. You can use read files for either netlist. 
author using reading very simple article without parameter. So you will use analyze elaborate. Then we saw uh, we saw the example of inference report for register. It is very very important to to study to take some time and study the elaboration report that comes out after you read the article. We saw how to separate combination and sequence and always box to make sure that number of registers is minimal. We saw the the coding style for FSN. There's one very good example here. You can follow this for your FSN coding. Then we saw a very important uh, concept of compiler synthesis directive. We saw few famous synthesis directives. Again, the recommendation is first code without synthesis directive. Only use synthesis directives when your coding style is not able to solve the problem. Because usage of synthesis directive is the synthesis directive that ignored by any other tool, any simulation tool, it might cause simulation to be mismatch. And simulation synthesis mismatch is not a desirable condition. It is difficult to debug. You have to again review your RTL code. Thank you.